What's up, Mobile Power Ads crew? Today's video, we are doing the door latch on the half doors. This is the half doors off my uh, Project Rust Bucket here. Now, if you guys have been following along with my videos and such, I've been doing like a uh, door repair series, I guess you might say, for the half doors. That was being, first video was how to remove the door panel and how to replace the little Christmas tree clips when and if they break. Then I went on with doing the uh, outside paddle, the ins inside door handle, and the lock cylinder, so on, so on, so on. Today we're doing the lock, me the latch mechanism that grabs the striker bolt to hold your door shut. That's a bit more involved because you really got to disconnect all the different rods inside the door because they all come back to this one location here. Not a hard job, a bit more involved, but not a hard job nonetheless. So, you guys want to check it out? All right, let's get that video rolling. But first, if it's the first time you guys land on Power Rack's YouTube channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Other Jeep videos, car videos, motorcycle videos, tool videos, review videos, all kinds of cool educational stuff that you just might actually learn something. Hit that subscribe, hit that little bell notification button, and I almost put myself a nine. I'm glad I didn't. So with that being said, let's go with the video. First thing we need to do is get the door panel off. T20 torques here and here takes the handle off. Right up in the top of your door where your um, soft uppers slide into you've got these right here and they just pull right out the top of the door then you take your trim tool like this or if you get froggy you could use a screwdriver but this right here will keep from damaging your paint you go under the door panel you pry up on the christmas tree clips which i'll show you now which of these clips right here now, if you want a better video of how to remove and replace the door panels, I'll link it up in the corner right there. And you guys can check out a more detailed video about door panels and replacing these clips when they break. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to remove this door handle right here. And to make life a little bit easier on you, and you'll see why here in just a moment, there is a rod. So when I move this right here, it moves this lever up because it's actuating a rod right here. Well, you don't have a whole lot of room to work over here. So take a shoe string. Tie it through that lever right there. Run it up through this hole here. Give it a little room because I just got a regular loop tied on at the end. Run it through there. Pull this down. Pull this tight. And that'll keep that. You can see they have the handle stretching up like that because it's pushing up lever uh, pushing that rod this way holding it up which gives you more room to work then you take a t20 torx and take out that screw inside the handle Right here, you've got a little lip. Right underneath here, you got a little lip, so you actually got to grab this right here and move it back that way to unhook it from the door right here to be able to pick it up. Now we're going to take our clips loose and pop. We're going to pop these clips right here and get the rods out of the handle. If you get lucky, you can just pop them out with your finger. There's that one. Then once you get that out, get that up, should I say. Try to move that rod over. Get that one out of the way. Then we got to do this one right here. Now this is the one you don't have a whole lot of room to work, as you see down in here. This is where we tied the shoestring at the other end of the door. It pushes the rod back this way, which extends it and gives us more room to work. Otherwise, the rod's kind of tucked up underneath the door, and it's a little harder to deal with. So we take that. Hopefully, I don't break it. Pop it clip back. And there we go. We got the handle out. 
Now removed the rods from the handle down here and you come down this way, you've got this one right here, which is your lock actuator that locks and unlocks your door. What we can do is get in here and gently pry that back to unlock the clip. Gently try to do this so therefore you don't break it and then have to replace the clips. Once you get that, take the rod, take your screwdriver, push down the rod, and just let it lay there. Therefore, you know where it come from. You pull all your rods and lay them out. I mean, I've got my door laying down, but if you're working on your door still attached to your Jeep, of course, you're going to take this rod out and lay it somewhere. But just remember where it came from. If you need to, get you some masking tape, wrap around it, and say a uh, lock actuator rod came in from the top or something like that. I'll put it like a number one there and number one here. Therefore, you can match up which end it goes to and which uh, rod attaches to what lever. I'll get out in a minute. So now, now that you've got those rods that are detached, you don't need to hold this lever down anymore. So then you, now you can take your shoestring or paracord or whatever it is you're using. Or if you want to, you can bring your zip tie. Whatever suits your fancy. You don't need it anymore. Get it out of the way. Now we got this lever, your outside door paddle connects right here. Honestly, I guess you could have actually left that there for the moment, but okay, let me get to show you guys a little more detail down here. Okay, what we got now is here's goes to your outside door paddle that opens the door from the outside. Now, if I'd left that shoestring on there, that would have pulled this back and made this stay wide open, but I got a little froggy on pulling that. So, therefore, I made it harder on myself. Not really, but anyway. Hold this down with my finger here, my pointy finger. Take my thumb, push back on that lever, on the clip, releases it. Then, if the plant's aligned correctly, you can slide that down out of the way. Okay, so we got those attached. Now this baby right here, this is the one that runs here. Okay, see what the camera sees. There we go. Yeah. So anyway, it's way back up underneath here, so you can't really get to it. So we're going to leave that one attached for the moment. Now we're going to unhook the cylinder lock. E-clip right there. We're going to remove it. Now to remove the E-clip, flat blade screwdriver, get behind that clip and gently work that clip out so it don't go flying somewhere and you're like, oh crap, now I gotta go find another one. And there's the E-clip out. Set it to the side. Then we're going to lift this right here up. This comes off. This comes over. Now to save yourself some uh, headache of losing this, we're going to take this right here. And we're going to raise it upward. And bring it over like that. And just, no big deal. Just take it off there. We have this loose from the lock cylinder. We have this one loose from the outside door paddle. This one goes all the way down to the inside door handle and then we got this one right here loose which goes to your locking mechanism so we're about ready to take the actual latch out so what we got next is a t25 torx here and here phillips head screw here and here so we'll go ahead and remove this part right here first so you get to the screws that's under here phillips head screwdriver do do get them off once the screws are out just simply grab hold of your rubber trim right here pull outward you feel it kind of snap a little bit because it's coming out of that crevice right there pull it back out of the way and there you go there's your other t25 take out this one this one and this one and take your latch Hopefully hold your mouth right to work it out of here because it can be kind of cranky. 
Now you still got that rod attached here that's going way up there, so you may have to maneuver it a little bit to help get this out. All right, what the heck's hanging? It's out. Now the issues I was having was a multitude of a few things. One, this rod right here kept hanging on the bottom of it. This rod right here kept hanging on the latch. And the long one right here that we left in got above this and didn't want to move. So I had to take the latch, pull it back forward this way to bring this rod end to tuck it underneath this so I can maneuver it down to work it out. Cool, cool. And see, the problem with it is, this right here is tucked underneath this flange right here, so it's kind of a booger to get to with it being still in the door. To help with clean up and lubricating the door latch, make sure you can pop these right here off, and they're just like all the rest of the clips. You just snap back out of the way, snap that one back, and the rod just lifts up out of there. That's all you gotta do. Be careful to break them, because you know, you got an old rig, those things break, they get brittle. Now, those of you who's been following the uh, videos about rebuilding these half doors or how to change out the latches and all that good fun stuff, if you've been following, you you may remember me mentioning that the locking mechanism here, that rod that connects here and goes all the way to the inside door handle, whenever I was pushing the button here, whenever I push that to try to lock the door, the rod would simply bend here, but it wouldn't actually push that over to lock the door or but it would unlock fine, but it wouldn't lock. See? So, uh, when I got it apart, now that I've got it apart, I was kind of looking at it, seeing what the problem was. Mechanically, I see nothing wrong with it at all. It means that it's a perfectly good, solid latch. But what it is, see all the grime built up right here? Over the years of junk building up inside all this grease, it turns into a, I don't know, it's sticky, it's gooey, it's really thick. And I, I mean, it's, I want to call it grease, but I mean, it probably was grease at one time. I don't know, but it's just, it gets so thick and gummy that nothing moves correctly. So I took some brake cleaner, shot it in between here and inside here, and I look. Works as smooth as it can be. What a person should do now is get some, uh, some more cleaner, some more uh, brake cleaner. Spray this thing down real good, get all that sticky goo crap off of it, because, I mean, it's just like, yuck. Clean it up real well, lubricate it, and put it back in. But really, people, all I'm doing is making a video for you guys, so I'm not going to put that kind of detail into it right now. I mean, I got this working. We're good to go. So we're going to put it back in the door, show you guys how to re -put, reassemble it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Um, but I will do this much. I got some white lithium grease out here with me. Uh, what I do with it? I said I did. Mm -hmm. This stuff right here. This stuff right here is very, uh, it lubricates very well. It's long lasting. And water, it's not really, water doesn't phase it. You know, like trying to wash it off or anything. So it's really good stuff. So I'll spray it in between these plates right here. And up inside here. That should keep it actuating just fine. Moving it back off camera so I don't spray my camera. And see, I got a shop inside there. This when you work it back and forth, it's gonna work it in between those plates right there and be lubricated nice and proper. But honestly, people, if you go through this much trouble pulling it out and you actually want it, you know, good solid working doors, clean it first. I'm just making a video for you guys, so I'm not gonna go into that kind of details right now. I got other videos I want to make today, so let's do this. 
In the reassembly process, it goes a bit easier if you do it in steps like this. This is the rod that went to the lock cylinder here for your outside door lock. Position it like you see I got it held here. You got the two bolts up here, one bolt here. Position it like this. Your lock, your lock clip, position it upward like that. Slide that in. Go ahead and lock this one in. You just simply gently squeeze it and it's locked in place okay now the long rod that ran up through here that i pulled out all at one time is right here i've already stuck it in there and what you want to do is put it feed it back in you see the hook here where it kind of kicks up at an angle that's going to be facing upward down here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to feed it back in here feed it back under and which way you see now you see how the bend is kicking upward, okay? Because that's where your door handle, your inside door handle is going to hook that. You pull it, it opens the door. Also notice this is pointing upward too because you got to get to the latch with it. So now we're going to set the latch in. Now, one thing is true is that someone's going to say, well, you could have done it taking it out, what I'm about to do here. Hole here, hole here, bolt holes, third one here. Remember, the single one goes up top, so your latch is going to go in like this. Here, here, here. All the lock, latching mechanism here. Okay. It's going to set in like this. Now, this is the one that goes to your door handle over there. Up that way. Take position your clip here. Slide it outward. Feed it back in there. Can't see it. Get in there, Dan. Oh, came out. There we go. Now we got it going in. Take this, slide it over. One finger's pushing on the rod, one finger pushing on the clip. Locks in. Now, you could also, instead of pulling that rod out and going through all the headache like I did a moment ago, once you get out past this flange right here, you can get to this rod right here to get to this clip to put a screwdriver inside here gently and push back on it. For me, it's kind of 50-50 as to whether I do that or not. I guess it really depends on what mood I'm in that day. Because get the screwdriver in there, you can probably get this flange right here and push back on a clip and undo it. But the problem of it is, this clips after so much time, they age and get brittle that if your screwdriver happens to slip back up side here, you can snap his back side off right here, and then you just have to go buy another clip. You know. So by pulling the whole thing out, I can better control how I remove that clip. So that's just me. Do it how you want to. Now we're gonna feed this back in here. You take it, tuck it in this way first, like that. Get past this, and from here you just gotta find that sweet spot to make it go. This is in the way. Got to put this up. Push that down. Push this in. Come on, where we at? Oh, come on, it's almost there. There we go. Let me show you guys what I do. When I said those words, it's almost there. There was something that the camera wasn't going to be able to see. Now, when I was feeding it in, I was dropping this this way to come back and try to come in with it. What I didn't do, right here are your little claws, a hook on your striker bolt. You have to drop it in 
these claws have to come in from this side and slide in this way. There's not enough clearance to push past this a little flange right here. So you got to drop it in right along in there, then bring it back up this way. It's hard to do this crap one hand. There you go. And then you see right here, our bolt holes are about ready to align up. So we'll just do that now. We'll put our bolts in and put our rods back together. One thing that's a bit helpful on these, if you look at the ends of those screws there, I got the shadow. See the ends of those screws where it's got that little area that's got no threads on it? That really helps whenever you take a sickle in here, it helps align that uh, latch up. It helps the thread start. That's the only good thing about any kind of torques on a Jeep. These right here, you got the little self-aligning buttons on them. And if you want to be super picky about it, just kind of eyeball where the screws were. You can see an imprint where the screws pressed into the paint. Therefore, you can kind of put the latch exactly back where it was, if you want to be that picky. Which sometimes with door alignments and issues and stuff, I kind of almost recommend it being that picky. And notice how I'm gripping the ratchet. I can't put a whole lot of torque on it like this because you don't need a whole lot of torque. I'm not going to get it way out here and just put the manhandle to it and just crank down on it. Get inside here. I've got my webbing of my thumb hooked right here. I can't apply a lot of torque like this, so it prevents you from stripping out screws or breaking the bolts or anything. There's that. Now, if you want to give it a little, little love bump, you can, but I mean, really, just take your thumb and just feel it. Because you don't want them tight and break them off in there, then you create yourself another headache. There's that. That's going to go there. But you got to position them correctly because this one. Okay, let me get the camera down. You can see, guys, see what's going on here. Now, your rods, when you put them back in place. Okay, this right here is the one that runs to the outside paddle that opens your door. It needs to go in first because this rod it has to set below that. It's very easy as you're removing these latches and moving stuff around for this to end up under this and you think oh that's the way it goes you gotta try to put it back together and it won't go to back together and you're fussing and cussing can't figure out why well there you go put this one in first position your clip here and you have to push it back or reach underneath here and pull the handle which you feel froggy to align that rod into the clip and it's a lot easier with two hands, people. There's that. Then bring it over. Snap that in place, but you got the idea. Now to put this back together. Again, it's a lot easier with one hand, but with two hands, but you take this, move it down over like that, and do that again slowly for you get a different cam camera angle. Take this, put it there, push and rotate it down, you're hooked in. You bring it on this side here and just set it on top of that and push your E-clip on. And here's the E-clip. I hate to bust y'all's bubble, but that right there is a two-handed job, so I'm about to set the camera on the tripod. The best way to put these E-clips in Put the edge of your screwdriver right against the edge of the E-clip and not the a lock cylinder. Take your finger push on it a little bit. Now here's the only fingers doing the work, okay? This one ain't doing nothing. I ain't pushing it at all. These fingers are hooking here. And I pull with those fingers. What does that do? Well, if you try to do this right here, see how it's rocking my screwdriver? Versus here, and I'm stabilizing up top. Let me zoom back a little bit so you guys see a little better. The edge of the screwdriver blade set around the E-clip. If I do just up here and push, 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 look, it's going to have the screwdriver cants. 
if I get right here and try to push, that does kind of work. But what you end up doing is, is pushing the E-clip up this way. And then it wants to pop out and it ends up who knows where. So if you just take the edge of your screwdriver, sit it right against that E-clip, take your fingers here, stabilize it up top here, and just pull with your fingers like this. Pull. It snaps from right in place because you get a linear push on the back side of the E-clip. Now, we got this right here. And we gotta make sure our clip's in the right position here. Okay, there's the right correct position, and I'll get the camera to show you guys what's up. Okay, there's our positioning for that. This rod has got to come back here. And really, I need two hands to do this, but the point of it is that is turned upward, it has to come up through this uh, clip right here. Then we'll take that clip right there, push it over, snap it on there. Now we're back to our shoestring. Run our shoestring down through there. Up through here. Pull this lever down. Sit you down because remember it makes that rod extends it so it's easier to reach down there on the uh, inside door handle. Now we'll put the door handle on, the inside door handle. Now when you put this door handle on, especially after you've had all that stuff out, it's very easy for these rods to become crossed to figure out, and you can't figure out which one's which. Just remember, uncross your rods to where they're running parallel with each other, well, pretty much parallel. Parallel means they're in line like this. If they're crossed, they're wrong. This top rod is gonna run to this top locking mechanism up here. The bottom one is going to be run to the door opening mechanism down here. So you don't want them crossed. If they're crossed, they're in the wrong position. Sweet. All right. Now, I don't know how much of the, I'm going to be in the way of the camera putting this in, but let's see. Here's the bottom rod. I'm going to try to stay out of the way of the camera as much as possible, but hey, I can only do so much. You know, take your clips. You want them pulling upward like this to give yourself room to clip onto them. Uh, plus, you can't flip them all the way around either. So you want your clips upward. Okay, I've got the pull lever snapped in it was being a total pain this one has to be pushed all the way around like this and there's what you end up with you see that the clips are snapped over top of the rods to hold them in place and there's that one it's a lot of fun sarcastically speaking getting those things up in there clips have to be on top of the rod as you're putting them in because they can't be like hanging below the rod because you can't flip them back around and snap them in the clips have to be above the rod to put them in properly. Cool. Then you take that right there. It just sits in like this. And screw holes lined up. Put your screw back in. Then once you get that screw back in, you come down here. Remove your shoestring. No more rod bending. It's working just perfect. Sweet. There you go. That's how it's done. Well, everyone, hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, hit me with a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't now. Don't forget to do that. And also, leave some cool comments down below. I hope you guys kind of hope you guys got a lot of information out of this uh, half door repair series I just shot. The only thing I really could do past this is like the door seals around it. I don't have any door seals to snap back in and those are totally shot so there's really not much I can do with those only thing you really got with those is the um, the screws that I showed you where I removed it to take out the latch you got your screws there on the other end you're gonna have some screws and as it goes along the bottom of the door it's gonna have these little clips now I can just about guarantee if you pull those rubber seals off 
that you're gonna break those clips that are gonna pull out of that rubber. Those are already like that. I'll tell you what, let's go look at it. So what we got here is the uh, the two screws that goes in right here. Now as you come around, see right there, that right there hasn't broken. But as you come around here, you can see that these are pulled out of the rubber. So you can see what's got going on here. They're just like little clips that push up in there and snap in. And you can just about guarantee, especially old Jeeves, if you try to pull this right here off, you're going to end up breaking them, pulling them through the rubber like these right here already are. But anyway, it's like that all the way around through here. Screw here. Uh, da, 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 da. Then you got to pull that piece out. And then it tucks it down side here. So not a whole lot to them to change them out. It's not hard. But just something you got to be very careful of as you pull those clips out. So I gave you guys a little rundown about the rubber seal around the door. You see that you got screws each end. You got the little uh, uh, clips that pop up inside the uh, sides and the bottom and such. Now, can you get it off without breaking them? Yeah, there's always that possibility that you can. But there's a bigger possibility that you're going to slip off that little tiny cap. And it's going to end up ripping that rubber. Because, I mean, come on. Those doors come off of a 93 model. This one's a 91 model. So you can by guarantee the rubber seals are pretty well done for. So, if you have to pull them off, expect to buy a new ones. And I don't think they're all that crazy expensive anyway, so not a big deal. So, everyone, again, if you guys enjoyed that video, hit me with a thumbs up, subscribe if you have it, and leave me some cool comments down below. And this will pretty much close out the uh, repair series for the half doors. I'll be getting onto the CJ doors before too long, but right now it's winter time, and I'm just going to leave them on and show you guys something. Do -do 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 -do. Close the door. See something different? That's right, hard top. We're gonna have some hard top videos coming up. So, what does hard top videos include? It probably some fiberglass repair. Maybe stick a headliner one. Wiring, how to wire up the rear window defogger, how to uh, the rear window wiper, and you know stuff like that. Because this has the rear window uh, defroster, the heated back glass, and it's got the holes for the. Wiper. I just haven't picked one up yet. So once I get all that, I'll be wiring all that stuff up, showing you guys how to do it. And don't forget the fiberglass repairs that comes with them. Cause I've got another CJ7 top in my backyard. Well, actually, it's on my trailer. That's gonna. Be, it needs some fiberglass repair. So you wanna make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those videos. Cool. All right, everyone. Appreciate you hanging out. Peace out. Later, y'all.